Okay, so I've just supported the um, the cable here on the motor side of the x-axis with a, with a G-clamp, quite crude. Um, there are other ways of doing it. So I'm just going to make sure that grub screw there is slackened, which it is. And I'm going to remove this M, last M3 holding the motor in. And now I should be able to just slide off the x-axis motor and let it rest in on the G-clamp. I can then move the x-axis across here, remove the bearing, and now I have the x-axis free. So what's important to understand here is the only source of friction in the mechanism is the interaction of the brass rollers and the aluminium extrusion. Okay, so I can really identify exactly how stiff or not that mechanism is. So I'm checking is there any rock or clay because I want those, those preloaded brass rollers to be making sure the system is nice and tight but I still want to be able to feel the system move freely from side to side. So at this stage, this is the stage that you would tune your, your brass rollers finally. Okay, so the Allen key is in there and I'm just checking it's tight. So again, it needs to be to such, a, such an extent that there's no mechanical, physical play or rock in the, the rollers and the aluminium, but I can still test and feel the rollers move nice and free. Okay. So the next step that's important is to ensure that the, the ball screw itself is sitting at the correct angle. Really important that the, the M6 bolt holding the ball nut is, is secure and tight. You should only be able to roughly adjust the angle of the ball screw and you sh it shouldn't be loose. It should be, you should never have to go in and tighten that. So all we're doing is just adjusting the angular position of the ball screw. You see I've exaggerated that. Before we align it, we need to make sure that we have sufficiently centered, okay? So there's a bit of float in these guys, okay? So what we do is we find a middle point. Again, you can be very scientific about this. This is quite rough, but I'm just roughly finding the middle point so I have some, some float, top and bottom, with which to work with, okay? And the same on this side. So you see that float there, so I'm going to seat it roughly in the middle. And again, you know, you can be very scientific and very precise about this and, and make sure it's exactly the same on either sides in terms of its type. For this, I'm just illustrating the process. So now what I can do is I can actually physically check and try and optimize so that that rock when I rock the ball screw, it's centered over the hole. So I can even look, look in here and check that I'm roughly centered. Okay, and check in here, it's a touch low. Okay, so that, that way I'm, I'm able to check the, the, the horizontal alignment of the ball screw, okay, as it goes into the end conditions. Because as this when it's fixed, as this moves towards the end, if this is high or low, it'll start to pinch and you get a stalling motion. But as you can see, I've done very, very little disassembly and I can verify the linear motion and I can check the Z axis, the X axis ball screen. So now I can reseat my end bearing. Okay. I can reseat. Always use good quality Allen keys on these club screws. Good quality, sharp, square edged Allen keys. Okay, so now I have hopefully um, a well-tuned x-axis, and it's worth it's worth just winding the the axis off. Okay, so we've got power to the machine. We've got two green lights on, so our e-stop is wired and, and released. I've used an LPT cable to connect to the back of the machine, and I'm connecting 
the UC100 module to the LPT cable. Good idea because you protect the micro USB connection. And now I'm ready uh, to fire up my UC CNC and start testing. So I'm going to fire up my Stepcraft profile. We should get a blue light on our module, which we do. And we're going to reset our UC CNC. Okay, so this is a good way to test if your limits are working. You should be able to click the X, the Y, and the Z limit and see that. So, for example, if the limits were on, you would not be able to reset because you can see here clearly it's something is pressed in your system. But if you release it, it will reset fine. Okay. So now I'm back in my run screen. I can start to move my X. Okay, so I'm going to reset my UC CNC and I'm going to go into configuration and I'm going to go into X axis and you can see here um, we're currently at 4000, so which that's a lot faster than the standard speed. The standard speed is 2600 to 3000. Okay, so I'm going to click in the box, I'm going to type in 4000 and I'm going to click enter in the velocity box and I'm going to click apply and I'm going to go back to my run screen and I'm going to move, so you can see the X axis is moving at four meters a minute right to the end okay so let's go even faster let's go to five thousand okay it's even starting to rattle the ball screw and again the whole way to the end let's go again even faster let's go to six thousand even cheekier and let's go from an acceleration of um, 200 meters per second a second to 300 meters per second per second and let's go to 400 meters per second per second so the acceleration is is, is making a more aggressive search for the, the top end velocity okay So you can see there, the machine is happy at 6,000 millimeters per minute and 400 meters per second per second. Let's just see what we get out of it. Eventually it's going to get to the point where it can't cope. Seven, eight thousand. Nine thousand. Okay, that's the. It's getting getting to the top end now, but you can see it's still almost stable. Yeah. So that's very aggressive. So even if you're happy at six thousand, okay, that's still twice the supported maximum recommended feed rate. So I know if I go back down to two thousand six hundred, for example, I know I've got plenty of torque, plenty of insurance. I know I'm not going to have any lost steps issues. So I'm pretty happy with that x-axis, that's moving nice and free and it's been verified at a much higher velocity and acceleration rate, that's bringing acceleration back down to 200, apply and save. So as you can see I haven't done any tuning to the x-axis once the machine's been turned on, all the, all the mechanical and, 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 and hand based tuning were enough to get a full 4 meters a minute, 6 meters a minute, 7 meters a minute, 8 meters a minute worth of, of rapid rate.